let's look at the idea of making excuses now. So many people who are new to public speaking will take a stage and they'll make a mistake and that's fine, but they'll, they'll try to excuse themselves for it. For example, they might say, well, what I want to talk about today is this, oh no, I messed up what I meant, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm so sorry. What I, what I really meant to say was this, and I apologize for, and they get on that route, the apology route. People really aren't interested in hearing apologies for things. People are interested in you getting the job done, you moving forward. You are the teacher after all. You are the person in charge. You are the person who knows this stuff, and they're not. So. I want you to realize that mistakes happen. There really are no mistakes. There are just, there's just feedback, but things happen. And I want you to eliminate excuses from your vocabulary. I want you to, when you have something go the way that you don't want it to go, that rather than drawing more attention to it with an excuse, that you just push past it. The excuse is a waste of everyone's time, and they have paid you for your time. When you think about how many people are in your seminar and how much they've paid, think about how much money you're getting per minute. You're getting a fair amount of money per minute. Every minute that you waste on an excuse, or by the way, as I've said before, a story that doesn't fit in anywhere that you're just saying, every minute that you waste on anything is a, a minute that you've, you've taken their money and given them nothing for it. So you want to... <laughs> When you make excuses, realize that you are taking a valuable class time and you just want to push forward. Also, making excuses waters down your message. It makes you appear weaker. Some people have the concept that if they appear weak enough, they'll establish more rapport. After all, aren't the students in a weak position? You're the teacher, they're the student. Aren't they feeling weak already? Yes, they are. But part of that is a good thing. Part of that is a powerful thing. You want that dynamic to exist, not in the sense that you are the king and they are your minions. That's not the dynamic you want. That's too extreme. But what you do want is that you are the teacher and you deserve respect in your field. They know a little bit, but not much, and they're learning from you. So you need to command respect. So a little bit of that is great. However, when you start to lower yourself to establish rapport, to lower the way they perceive you by appearing human, if you will, we're all human anyway, but you know what I mean, by, by making mistakes and, uh, and calling attention to it and saying, oh, well, you know, I'm, I'm human and that, and that happens, and you, and you keep on harping on that, making excuses and so forth, you're bringing yourself down. They don't want to be in a seminar with a person who is just the average Joe or Jane. They don't want to be in that seminar. That's not the seminar they paid for. The seminar they paid for is the one in which you come in with power, you're the expert, and when you make mistakes, you just move forward. You don't go back and excuse yourself. You, it, it happens, and you, and you push forward. So realize that that's going to happen. Also, I want you to deliver your message with power. I want you to, and we've talked a lot about this, about you building up your power, and we've done a lot of exercises, you and I, to build up your power, and I've, I've had Sarah demonstrate them, some of them, but what I want you to realize is that your message needs to come from a place that is, that is powerful. And when a powerful message is delivered, there aren't a lot of ums, or uhs, or errs, or uh, hmm, let me think now. It doesn't come across like that. When a message is delivered powerfully, it's a flow, a constant flow of information. So when you start watching yourself and checking for things that you're doing that you could do better, I want you to watch for how many times you say um or ah or er or anything like that. Anything where you are uh, mm, uh, like that when you're mm, uh. Now every now and then it's going to happen. That's just a normal course of events. Every now and then I do it. Every now and then I'm, uh, hmm, I'm thinking what I'm going to say next. It does happen every now and then. But if you are talking like this, okay, um, what we're going to do is uh, um, we're going to, well, I, I guess what we'll do is um, break up into groups, if that's all right, and um, 
uh, we'll probably, um, you see how you see how I'm talking. I'm saying if you think that if that's all right, probably and so forth. That's not what they want. They want something definite. Whatever you say goes goes. If you say it's it's the way we're going to do things, it's the way you're going to do things. So you need to make sure that you're delivering everything from a place of power. Everything is delivered from that position. And if you take a Toastmasters class, which I strongly recommend you do, I recommend you join the Toastmasters group. They are going to pay attention to your ums and ahs and ers, and they're going to count them for you. And they're going to tell you how many times you did it so that you can eliminate these from your speech. They just want you to get it out with power. Just say what you have to say and mean it. So keep that in mind.